Greetings. This presentation is for the SCA Bardic Showcase on Facebook. And I wrote a little poem about the Hundred Years' War and the Battle of Cressy. The Battle of Cressy in the Hundred Years' War between the forces of England and France in an attempt by the English kings, descendants from the French kings of old, to regain the rule of France. This poem is titled, A Century of War and Strife to Interrupt a Peasant's Life, by Nicholas St. Ern. In July, 1346, year of our Lord, English forces in Normandy are marching forth, brave knights on destriers with their harnesses donned, and with their bright banners unfurled, leading them on. 15,000 Englishmen scorched and scourged the land. No house or hovel or hut shall be left to stand. The farms and fields will become empty, barren space, like the black death that lays waste to the populace. To war, to war, to fight King Philip de Valois. Nigh a hundred years the English will battle on. The Normans first came from France with King William, and since 1066, ruled jolly old England. Now they returned to claim the land of Normandy, but the French inhabitants lost their loyalty to the Norman King of England, Edward III, and separate from England they wished to be ruled. King Philip VI of France was their sworn sovereign, so to their defense he came with the Oriflamme. The king's war banner meant no quarter be given. Soldiers fight to the death no prisoners taken. By August 26th, the English reached Cressy and there prepared to battle the French enemy. The young Prince of Wales, known as the Black Prince Edward, had positioned his men at arms to the vanguard. The king with his earls formed the rear guard on the hill the English longbow archers, strong men of great skill, were lined on either side of the army like wings, where they could support the knights and defend their king. Twas ended day ere the French found the battlefield, so King Philip urged his army that day to yield. The French nobility were too eager to wait, to prove their courage they attacked, though it was late. Six thousand Genoese crossbowmen moved forward, but their pavis shields were in the baggage rearward. The blaring trumpets and drums announced their attack, with the French men-at-arms advancing at their back. It started to rain, and the field became muddy. English archers' arrows flew, making it bloody. The longbows shot farther than the crossbows could reach, and without their shields the crossbowmen could not compete. Like the rain, longbows' arrows came down in the storm, made the Genoese fall and retreat in alarm. The French men-at-arms thought the crossbowmen cowards, so trampled them with their horses as they charged forward. Showers of arrows tumbled knights on their horses. Uphill through mud, the French could not muster forces. The English longbowmen cut down the enemy. Then dismounted knights fought the tossed French cavalry. In fifteen waves, the French cavalry charged ahead, twelve thousand riding over those recently dead. Ten thousand swift arrows the mounted men would meet, piling dead knights and horses high at archers' feet. The battle raged as, as dusk fell, and the light grew dim. King Philip twice lost his horse from underneath him. Count Henault, 
grabbed the king and dragged him to safety. The oriflamme was lost to the English army. King John of Bohemia, old and without sight, bridled his horse, with one on each side, to his knights, so he could sally forth and in the battle fight. But King John and his men would not survive that night. Few rode past the archers to fight the English knight. The bloody battle raged on until near midnight. Then King Philip VI and his retainers fled, leaving behind over 10,000 of their dead. The battle had ended, and the French rode away, hoping to regroup and to fight another day. Welsh and Cornish spearmen advanced on the wounded, and from their dead bodies their treasures were looted. The French lost 10,000 foot soldiers in defeat, 2,000 Genoese crossbowmen in retreat, 1,542 knights and lords were also felled by the English arrows and swords. While the English forces lost two knights and one squire, 40 archers and a few dozen Welsh for hire. They then battled through the land, hoping to bring the French crown triumphantly to Edward their king. In Cressy, the summer of 1346, King Edward III beat the French Philip VI. 15,000 English archers and spearmen routed the army of 30,000 Frenchmen. Brave knights on destriers with their harnesses donned and with their bright banners unfurled leading them on. Nigh a hundred years many English kings will fight, but alas, they will lose to the French army's might. <laughs>